everybody, this is Joe Rebello with Kaizenpo Goshen Jutsu. Today we're going to be going over one of the main combinations taught in that particular system. Again, Kaizenpo Goshen Jutsu uh, brought to America by Sonny Gascon. Actually, I should be elaborate on that. It's not brought to America. It was founded in America. It is an American system of martial arts. Uh, Victor Sonny Gascon, again, came to America doing this art that he had learned from his instructor, Adriano Imperato, which was Kajukembo. And he was teaching in the Burbank area, and he got a visit from uh, three gentlemen, Tony Ramos, and unfortunately the other two gentlemen's names elude me at the moment. And basically he was informed by them that he started paying money to Nanoi, uh, AKA Adriano Imperato. And uh, he was more upset with the fact that Nanoi had not, or again, Adriano Imperato, Sijo, had not contacted him directly. They weren't just students, they were friends. So he was, he, was, he was more than mildly perturbed when told he would have to pay in, and again, and not been informed by uh, Sijo Imperato directly. So basically, the way he was, he was a, uh, a teamster, he was a steamador, he was, he, was, he was a tough guy. He was the one who went to go collect your dues if you didn't pay them. So basically, he said to the three gentlemen, you want to step on the floor and discuss this? And they were like, no, 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 we're just passing a message. And he said, well, I have a message passed back to see, to, to see Joe. I'm done with, Ka with Kajukembo. So at that point, he was, he, he, and I should mention, since then, many years have passed, and he since has mended fences with, with C. Joe before he passed, and, you know, and always has the utmost respect for C. Joe and Parada. But at the time, he was very upset, and he said, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to create, I'm going to redesign things so I can teach. So he said, okay, where is... Where does that art come from? What well, comes from China? Okay, well, you know, I deal with Chinese and Japanese. If I said in Japanese, what would be what would kata? You know, like karate, way of China hand. All right, so kata. All right, what, what, all right, who brought it here? Well, it was uh, Durama, you know, Damo, Bodhiharma. Okay, we're going to use him for the symbol because he brought it to Shaolin, etc. Well, what did he teach? Well, in Japanese, he taught Zen, Zen Buddhism, Chinese Chan Buddhism. Okay, kata, Zen. Okay, what are we doing? Well, we're doing Kenpo. The law of the fist. Okay, well, this is China's enlightened law. So along with the philosophy, they taught this. So kata zen po. In Japanese, go shinjutsu. Now, if you notice, uh, when we have it listed, go is separate. When you pronounce it, you don't have to separate the go of go shinjutsu. Um, I was told that the reason he did it was, uh, again, Motose had placed it and, and separated it that way. So he decided to follow suit. That's the key. So that being said, let's go directly into our material. We're going to talk about combination number two. I'm going to demonstrate it in the air and then I'm going to detail it out. Again, from front position, bow, right foot out, elbows. Hey! Now we're ready to begin the technique. And we visualize the box. This is the foundation. People always talk about Shaolin Kempo and whatnot, and when I hear that particular art. One of the key ingredients of the Shaolin Kung Fu system and its subsequent Kenpo arts is the box from the square horse to the corner of the box, the square, corner of the box, the square, corner of the box, the square, corner of the box, the square. This is our foundation action. We learn to step in with our left, out with our right, in with our left, out with our right, in with our right, out with our left, in with our right, out with our left. This is our foundation square horse dance training. So, it is very prevalent in this particular technique, combination number two. I see others do another variation on this where they'll draw their feet together, quarter turn, and step out. Draw in, step out. Draw in, quarter turn, step out. Draw in, quarter turn, step out. And they'll teach the footwork for two combinations with that. But the way I originally learned it, like combination three, in combination three, we're stepping to the corner of the box and slipping a punch. So too, instead of moving to the outside, we're slipping the punch to the inside and then squaring off so we're parallel with our opponent's punch. So again, I'm going to show you, first of all, the Kata Zenpo Goshen Jutsu version of this, the original version, then I'm going to go into Shaolin Kempo and some other orientations from that. So again, from here, Bow, right front and elbows. Hey! Combination number two. One, two, walk, back to knuckle, shuffle an elbow, grab sweep takedown, check the leg, chop the groin, step back, cross and cover up. 
Let's elaborate on this, shall we? Let's. With the assistance here, sir. Yes. This is Mr. John Malor. He's uh, one of my black belts in Kata Zenpo Goshen Jutsu. He's also a black belt in Raven Kenpo Jiu Jitsu. Uh, again, he also studies several different martial arts. That's the Jersey Rebellious Kempo Karate. There's numerous arts you can learn under one roof. We're going to go and detail out combination number two. So now we face one another and let's take a little step further down this way. Thank you. Placement A, from position right from east left. Bow. So now he's going to step back into the half moon stance. I'm going to step out, right foot on elbows. Eww. Now, as he goes to punch, punch. I'm going to slip the punch here and square off so my body is parallel to my opponent's punched in face. I then am going to execute, and again, a lot of people use the eight-point blocking system as a point of reference. So if we do eight-point blocking system, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm going to use a number one block here. I guess some people say, hey, I'll do outward, outward, inward, inward. Isn't that number three? Yes. So I have a brain cramp every once in a while. So this is number three block. I have to be easier for me to call it an inward block. So I drive my opponent's arm away. As I do, it opens up his face. At this point from here, I cock my hand and I fire a back to knuckle up under his nose to drive his head back. At this point, I take my right foot and I execute a step drag shuffling foot maneuver and bury it into his chest. And that takes the wind right out of his sails. I then circle my hand around, grabbing the leg. Take him down. Yeah, right. Get up. Eh, wrong answer. What do you mean, Mr. Rebo? What do you mean, what do you mean, Sensei? What do you mean, Sifu? What do you mean, Shifu? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean? It's not against a step through punch, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this technique was not originally designed to be used against a step through punch. Why not? I'll show you. A position. Ooh. If I hit my opponent, right, I back to knuckle him, I lift his head. I hit him in the sternum, I fold him. Where's the majority of his weight? Well, it's buried on his back leg. So please tell me, how am I supposed to sweep him if the, excuse me, if the majority of his weight is on his back leg? Relax. Simple. It's not supposed to be. Instead, we're now fighting a karate guy. Who are we fighting? A boxer. Western martial artist. So, get to a left lead boxing stance, guards up. Left jab, straight right, left hook, right uppercut, overhand right. That's his arsenal. Unless the boxer is a southpaw, he doesn't put his right foot forward. His right foot's in the, in the rear because his power hand, his right hand, needs that sufficient travel. The left hand is weaker, it's his speed hand. Now Bruce Lee believed in putting his power hand in front. Well, then again, he did Wing Chun. So now, in this case, we're dealing with a boxer. So now, for position, bow, get in the boxing stance. So he's got to get a little closer so he can fire this in, right? So he's going to fire a straight right. Go. Boom! That's what's going to happen here, folks. So again, move. So I slip the punch in the inside. Hey, I don't worry about that left hand. That's why I do this. So I check off that left hand. Then from here, I do a dipping elbow. I drop down. Ooh! Hey, there's no weight on this leg. Step right in. Hi, how you doing? Wham! Straight to the front. Step back. Cross and cover up. So as you can see, I mean, I hear people, I've heard people since the 1970s talk about this technique and how difficult two combination was to do and how they couldn't get the sweep and they had to catch the person up at the knee. And I watched Fred Valari one time catch a guy by the back of the knee, pick him up and chop him in the air with the knife hand to the ground before the guy dropped. But simply stated, it's not made against the step through punch, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't originally designed for that. It was changed, why? Because we all learned to step moon, half moon in, half moon in with a straight punch. And we learned 9,043 techniques against a step through right hand punch. <clears throat> Wrong answer. This is not originally designed for this in the Kata Goshu Jutsu system. This is designed against a boxer's right hand punch. And by taking the weight off the left leg, it is far easier to sweep 
take down, and chop. Let's go into that motion. We'll go up a little bit further. So now, let's look at the ending of this, right? What if we back even further? Because, hey, I can, you know, here's another, by the way, another important feature. There are certain techniques in the system that were designed to be done against the wall. Three combination is against the wall. Two combination is against the wall. Why? We don't step back. So now, I'm stuck again with my back to the wall, as it were, and he's gonna punch my face. He's just gonna punch my face. He's gonna punch my face and bash the back of my head against that wall. So when he does that, I slip the punch, block from here, back to knuckle. Shuffle elbow, grab, take down. No weight on this leg. See how I can roll my hand and contour it? I take my foot and his leg is still up in the air. I drag my knee, bring your leg up, sir. So I don't catch him here. I grab my knee right against his leg. I pin him, I spread his legs, and then I do a sliding knife hand chop to his groin. Then I step back with my left foot. People say, why? Because if he tries to roll in and kick me with that leg, I can sweep it out of the way and protect my groin. Hey, he might roundhouse kick me from the groin. That's a distinct possibility, so I have to account for that. Thanks, sir. Now, many of you will look at that technique and you'll say, hey, I have it different. You will probably have it either one or two ways, maybe more. You will either be at your horse stance and you'll slide up, feet together, pivot, step out, and then do the technique from here, block, back to knuckle, then you're gonna take your rear foot, slide it up to your front foot, cock the hand across your body, and step and strengthen the outward elbow. Let's see what we're doing here. And again, many people have that. Uh, that's the way I originally learned it in the 1970s from the original United Studios of Self-Defense with Fred Villari back in the 1970s. So let's detail that out again. From my horse stance, I step to the corner and square, right? That's how I was taught it. A lot of people will bring that foot in, pivot, and we're drawing that L. Again, the inward block stays the same. Number three block. Come to center, back to knuckle. Drag the back foot up to meet the front foot. Step out, elbow. This is known in other systems as a drag step foot maneuver. It's a shuffle. It's, the, it's a hidden foot movement. That's the term it's used in Kung Fu circles. It's a hidden foot movement. Why? Well, I'm going to side horse stance right here. Now, I'm going to slide off. Did you see that foot really move, that back foot? Do it right, your front leg should obscure the action. So it's a little bit of, uh, Bruce Lee's called depth deception. The person thinks I'm still in the same spot, but in reality, I'm sliding up with my back foot. I cock my hand across and then step out with my elbow strike. Then I sweep the takedown. Another important feature regarding this that was added in, I've seen in recent history, and I like it. It's a great little movement to compound this motion. This circular motion, originally we passed the whole body. Lately, I've seen people take advantage of the Chinese Kung Fu movements and the Tiger Claw system, Fu Jiao Pai, and uh, various incarnations of, of tiger-based uh, Kung Fu systems. Composition. So this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. Hi. Now I had to be real careful, he's wearing glasses, so I turned my hands slightly. But in reality, take your glasses off for a moment, thank you. From this button, I track my, and I compound this, which makes his leg even lighter. I do this raking tiger claw across his face, pushing his head back. A Japanese would call it kazushi, creating the, uh, the balance. Again, I did here, I did here, but then I do here. He's got nothing. Right, he's up on, he's up on toes, his balance is broken. So some people will compound that with a raking tiger claw to the face, to compound the sweep. It's a wonderful action, I, I really like it. Um, it wasn't originally in there, but it can be compounded and placed in there. Uh, again, we call it compounding in Mr. Parker's system, American Kempo. It's all part of that same motion. Boom, boom, rake, hook, sweep. That's the key. So there you have it. There's some insights into two combination. Um, it's a beautiful technique. If you do it with a shut, drag up and elbow, that's fine. Um, it has its reasons and rationale. Again, from horse, I'm dragging my foot up to buy myself the time to get close to my opponent so that I step in with the elbow and drive that shot like so. Again, I, again, originally, boom, 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 it's just stepping, step drag, with shuffle with front foot, boom, and I'll tell you, I had a student of mine, I was teaching this technique to teach him Kata Zenpo Gosho Jutsu, I said, this is the Kata Zenpo, it's a lot more dangerous. 
And as I go through some of these techniques, you're going to go, man, some of these techniques are really dangerous. Exactly. And they've been changed over the years to take out some of the danger to individuals. I did this to my student. He called me up the next day. He says, Mr. Rebello, I'm in the hospital. Are you okay? No. Last night I couldn't sleep. I couldn't breathe right. I go in. They x-rayed his chest. In the center of his chest, there was a little circular dent where I had struck him with that elbow. Some styles would call this movement, boom, the iron spike. It's like taking a railroad spike and, uh, or taking a stake and killing a vampire. It's very effective, very lethal, and can do a ton of damage. And can be, as we said earlier, lethal. So please be very careful with this when you do the original version of two combination. Well, I'm on over here, John. That being said, I hope you got some insight out of this video. And uh, we're going to be producing more on Kata Zimpo and its background. Again, this is Joe Rebello, known to many on the martial arts world. The internet is Kempo Joe from Position. Bob. Until next time, you keep training.